This little industrial pavilion is part of the Steiff factory, which is located in the middle of the town of Gingen in southern Germany. It was built in 1903 as part of an early expansion of a company known the world over for making teddy bears. We're not sure who the architect is. It's suggested it may have been designed by one of the Steiff family members, Richard Steiff. The building is worth commenting on for a number of reasons. First of all, it was built in 1903, so this places it earlier than some way more famous early modern experiments like the AEG Turbine Factory and the Fagus Factory. It's also about 25 years earlier than the Villa Savoie and the Barcelona Pavilion. However, even now, after the internet has made its existence available to everyone, it remains quite anonymous. The pavilion has a steel frame construction. The main structural support comes from four large columns located at each corner. Inside the building, smaller, really quite slender columns are arranged in a rectilinear grid to provide additional support. All the elements of conventional modern design are in place here. In fact, the elements of construction are so presented that they already hint at a style of modernism that was to become popular much later in the 20th century. We're talking here about the high-tech movement led by architects like Michael Hopkins. This here is Hopkins' own house of 1976. So, in a sense, the building is already quite interesting. However, there's more to be said. What makes the Steiff factory really interesting are the exterior walls. The building has a double skin facade, one of the earliest, if not the earliest example of this form of construction to be found anywhere. Double skin facades became popular in the mid to late 20th century when architects began to address the need for energy efficiency. They comprise two layers of glass separated by a gap, usually just large enough to allow a person to gain access and to move around, so often around 600 millimeters. In the Steiff factory, this dimension is actually quite a lot smaller. Double skins operate on a basic principle, the manipulation of the layer of air which exists in the gap between the inner and outer leaves of glazing. This layer can be exploited in a number of ways. For example, during the cooler months, the layer can be warmed by the radiant heat of the sun so that the interior of the building is insulated from the cold air outside. More elaborate double skin arrangements take advantage of the tendency for warm air to rise. If vents are provided at the upper and lower levels of the external skin, a draft of air can be forced to travel up through the cavity. As fresh air coming in from the lower level moves up, it can be drawn off to cool the interior during the warmer months. Many variations on this principle have been employed over the years. Air can be forced to move or to remain trapped in one location. It can be used to warm a space or it can be used to cool a space. There are limitations, of course. If the external air temperature is high to begin with, the cooling effect on the interior will be limited. Also, as conditions on the south facade are very different from those on the north facade, there can be challenges in developing a design that integrates both conditions. In the Steiff factory, the external walls have the same arrangement on all four sides. The system is not designed to bring fresh air into the building. The air in the cavity acts merely as an insulator. The Steiff factory has an early and compelling low-tech approach to a problem that has been addressed in the intervening years, but sometimes to less appealing effect. The appeal of the Steiff building is that its architecture relates directly to the way in which it interacts with its environment. And there's one last point. There is no staircase in this building. The story goes that one of the Steiff family members was confined to a wheelchair. So an external ramp was installed to allow her to navigate the building on her own.